be fun to look at 10 big culture shocks for Americans when they're visiting Europe. I think it's definitely very easy to overlook the fact that there are so many differences between Europe and America. Of course, there are differences within them too. But the fact that we're both in the Western world, it seems like on a superficial level, we're very similar. But in fact, we're super different. So if you haven't traveled outside of America, this should be interesting. And if you have, let me know if you can relate to any of these below. Before I get into the video, do be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, the next time you go to brush your teeth, your gums will bleed. Oh. Maybe like and comment too, just to be sure. Okay, the first big difference, and I'm using this title for a lot of things, it's the food. Food is so different in Europe and America. Unbelievably so, in so many ways. I won't even cover them all today. In Europe, there is definitely a lot less choice when it comes to food. Somebody was asking me recently on Patreon, did we have Greek restaurants in Ireland? And I think I can name one Greek restaurant in the whole country. There are probably more than that, but it's not a common thing. Of course, we have standard things like Italians, Chinese restaurants, places like that, but there are just the speciality ones. You don't necessarily have that kind of choice. They exist, but you don't have a lot to choose from. Obviously, I've done a lot of supermarket videos. You can see there's a lot less choice there too. Then there's the quality of the food. I love American food. I love when you guys send me American food. I love going to America and eating American food, but there is a little bit of a difference in the generic stuff quality of the food. A lot of American products have an excessive amount of sugar in them, a lot of preservatives and things, which just kind of lowers the standard of food. Of course, because you have choice, you can get the really nice stuff too, but you'll usually have to pay a little bit more. In Europe, most of the food tends to be really fresh and really good quality. And that brings me to another difference. People always talk about the portion sizes in America being huge compared to Europe. And the reason for that is because the quality of food in Europe is generally a little higher. Again, I'm not talking about everything. There are of course better restaurants in parts of America than there would be in Europe. I'm just talking about on the main street. I know a guy who when he came over to Ireland was served his food portion in a really nice restaurant and he went like, this is not enough food for me, I'm a big guy, I'll be asking you for another round. And uh, sorry about the terrible accent. And the waitress turned around to him and she said, I tell you what, if that doesn't fill you up, I'll get the second round on me. And sure enough, he didn't even finish his plate because the quality of the food was so good, it filled him up even though there was less of it. I've even pointed out that the quality of McDonald's is better in Ireland. It's not as nice in Spain, actually, interestingly enough, but still better than America. <laughs> there is a lot of reasons for that. I went into that more in depth in a full video. I'll put the link somewhere. But yeah, food, very different. The next thing you'll notice when you visit Europe is old stuff. There are things that are older in Europe than there are in your whole country. Then your whole country. Like, there's cupboards that will be older than your whole country. In America, the infrastructure is great. It's all pretty modern. It's up to date. De decor doesn't get too old. In Ireland or in Spain, you can step into a room that hasn't been modernized since forever. Like, like forever. Not forever, but long. <laughs> really long time. America is obviously really young in and of itself. So when you look around, things will usually all people that I know coming from America, they're like, oh my God, this building's amazing. Oh my God, this room is amazing. Which is obviously really nice to hear, um, but we're just so used to it. It's not really a big deal. <laughs> definitely nice though, you know, nice. Okay, the next one is definitely a taboo. Uh, I've talked about weight before. Um, on the channel and I've gotten in a little bit of trouble but here's the thing this is just facts I, I didn't make this up this is just the case okay there are obese people everywhere in the world there are obese people in Europe there are obese people in America they're everywhere however the commonality of it is just factually a lot more in America there's a lot more morbid obesity in America than there is in Europe. I didn't make it up, it's just a fact. And even within Europe, there is a big disparity. For example, since I've come here to Spain, I would definitely say Irish people are more overweight than Spanish people. Everywhere I look in Spain, I see people and they're all trim and tanned and beach ready. And somebody pointed out to me that maybe this is because they live near the beach and maybe that's the case for everywhere near the beach. Like when I went to Miami, they were definitely in better shape than they were in some of the other states. And true, that could be because they live near the beach. But even if you go inland in Spain, people are in pretty good shape. You don't see really, really overweight people. Compared to Ireland even, where we live in just jumpers and hoodies. Like here, I'm feeling like very squishy. Very squishy. Probably stand to go for a run, to be honest. <laughs> Ugh, that's, it's horrible. Never gonna happen. But throughout Europe, all of the places I have ever seen 
I have not seen morbid obesity on the same scale as I have in America. You just don't see it. I'm sure it exists, but it's not everywhere. So that might surprise you if you come to Europe. The next big difference you'll notice, and it might seem obvious to point this one out, but at the same time, it's on products that you wouldn't necessarily expect. It's the price differences. I would say in America, from state to state, there are certain things that tend to be about the same price. All alcohol tends to be in the same price range. You can go for a meal around the same price change. Maybe if you live in the country, it's a little bit cheaper than it would be in the city for sure. You go to a shop and you buy a doll for your niece. It's about the same price in Texas as it would be in Missouri. But in Europe, the prices are totally different from America and totally different from country to country. I was sharing with some of you guys recently that I went to a beauty salon in Spain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't do anything, I just got my nails manicured. But the manicure itself was something like 30 euro and I didn't get like anything, like any special kind of nail polish. It was just like a nail hardener and they like did my cuticles and stuff and that was 30 euro. Compare that to Ireland where that kind of manicure would be about 15 to 20 euro. But on the flip side, if you want to get your legs waxed, it's only eight euro here. Whereas in Ireland, it could be about 30 euro. Here in Spain, you can buy lunch for under eight euro. Whereas in Ireland, your lunch will cost you about 15 euro. On the other hand, when it comes to buying products, they tend to be more expensive in Spain. For example, children's toys, any household goods, they're all more expensive in Spain than they are in Ireland. You also obviously don't need to add the tax on, you know exactly how much everything costs on the price tag. The next big thing that will shock you is the opening hours in Europe can definitely be very different from America. Throughout Europe, a lot of stores will be closed on a Sunday. That's just a thing. They also tend to only be up until certain times of the evening, whereas in America, a lot of them are 24 hours a day. We do obviously have 24 hour a day stores, but they're like novelty. Things like the doctor's surgery will be closed on a Sunday. And here in Spain, you have to deal with the siesta where a good majority of stores will be closed from 12 to three every single day. They'll then open at three and stay open till eight o'clock. But it's funny when you're trying to do stuff in the middle of the day, it's just, look. I definitely think it would be really difficult for an American to get their head around things just being closed on a Sunday or ending at six o'clock. In America, everything's like when you need it, when you want it, it's there. But in Europe, not so much. You have to know the opening hours and things ahead of time because they might not be open. The next big difference is ice. You guys always tease us in Europe about the fact that we don't automatically offer ice in drinks. And while I do like ice in my drink now, I would have to say you have to be a little bit more careful where you get your ice. So for example, let's say you're a tourist visiting Lanzarote from the UK for your summer holidays. You might not want to get ice in your drink because you're not used to the water there and it could give you a dodgy tummy. See, in America, most of your ice comes out of those cool fridge things that make your ice special ice. It tends to be filtered and ready to go, whereas here, it pretty much comes straight out of the tap. So yeah, you want to be careful if you're getting a drink with ice somewhere unusual. Next up, a meal is an event. In a restaurant in America, I find I tend to feel a little bit rushed because they want to turn that table around as quick as they can to raise profits. In Europe, a meal is definitely more sat over. If you're in a restaurant, they treat it like an event. People take their time over their meals. There can be a gap between courses if you want that. Obviously, there are other places that turn around a little faster like TGI Fridays and stuff. But generally speaking, if you're going to like a mom and pop kind of restaurant, a family owned restaurant, they'll just let you sit there for however long you want because generally we tend to think the profit is in the drinks. So if you can keep the Europeans drinking, they're gonna keep paying and the money is in the drinks. Next up, a difference that you'll notice and this might again seem obvious, but it's fashion. Fashion is very different in parts of Europe than it is in America. Now, since the internet came in, there's definitely more global fashion, but from country to country in Europe, it can be very, very different. I would say literally up until about two years ago in Spain, Ireland and Spain had totally different fashion sense, but now I guess because Instagram is big, there tends to be a more universal look that's in. Whereas it used to be, we thought Spanish people wore really, really skinny jeans, um, really, really tight ones, and that seemed strange to us. Also in Germany, for example, they wear their jeans up much higher, but now again, people just all dress the same everywhere. But still some brands that would be cool in America are not cool in Europe. So yeah, if you're wearing something cause you like the label, maybe just check if that's important. It's not really important to me, so I can't really relate on that, but 
I don't know, other people like labels. Is this what I've become? Materialistic? Shallow? Next, there are going to be big brand names that you don't recognize, huge franchises of restaurants and things. So do check them out, but you'll find that they're gonna be everywhere, like chains of restaurants that you've never heard of. And they're super popular and that can come as a surprise to people. So for example, in Ireland, we have Supermax. Everybody knows Supermax, everybody loves Supermax. But if you're coming from America, you might think it's a knockoff McDonald's, whereas we know the truth. But I just want to get on to the number one thing because this is a huge difference between America and Europe and I think it's kind of interesting. It's to do with attitudes around nudity. Okay, so straight out the gates, there's obviously a difference between a country like Spain and Ireland where people walk around in jumpers versus walk around in swimsuits all the time. Of course, people in hotter countries are gonna be more comfortable with their bodies, but there are some other things surrounding nudity that I think are interesting too. Dirty magazines are sold openly on shelves in every newsagent and supermarket. They're just everywhere and they're just girls usually with their, mm, and yeah, they're all just, doing their thing. Sometimes, no matter how I edit it, it just looks bad. Also on beaches here, a lot of women choose to sunbathe topless. That's nothing to do with it being a nude beach. That's just what they do. Now, people don't go around jumping up and down with their boobies out, but it's just that they're trying to get no tan lines and that's what they do. And they're just, they roll over and they get their boobs out and just boobs galore. Boobs! It's not a problem, it's very normal. In some Scandinavian countries, you'll even be looked at as a prude or weird if you go into a sauna with your clothes on or with some kind of swimsuit on. Like, people will think you're very odd. So that's it for big cultural shocks today. Let me know below in the comments if there are any differences that you've noticed if you've visited Europe already or if you haven't and you've seen on TV or something like that, I'd be really interested to hear. Shout out today to all my pals over on Patreon because of them, I can keep this channel going. So thank you to each and every one of you. You can join my Patreon for as little as the price of Terry Gold butter and then you'll get two extra videos a week and you'll be able to tell me how to do things and boss me around not really um but we have nice chats in the community there and lots of other stuff too so uh yeah if you just want to be in my gang do look at it a self-promoting thing hooray that's it for today bye <coughs> 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 <coughs>